Hi, I'm Tom Edwards. I'm the Chief Digital and Innovation Officer for the Agency Business at Epsilon, and today we're going to talk about Google I.O. and some of the key trends and analysis from the event. So 2019 really took a couple major steps forward, specifically for the assistant, the role of visual search, the evolution of duplex, and so much more. I really enjoy following Google, specifically around their evolution of AI, how search and the knowledge graph plays a really central part in terms of how their products are coming to market. And they're a big believer and they're, they're actually following through with the idea of pushing towards an, a world of ambient computing to where the environment adapts to us versus us inputting into technology. So one of the first things straight out of the gate was the mission statement. They want to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. But one thing that was a bit of a strategic pivot here was that it's not just about answers, but it's also about making sure that their products are providing enough utility to help individuals get things done. So we're going to start with search. One of the things you'll see immediately here is that as they look to incorporate more machine learning algorithms into the search product, they want to be able to provide more context and more utility beyond just answering a specific question. So you'll see everything here from the story timeline all the way through to additional context around the images and creating almost clusters of information that are aggregated and curated by the systems. This also applies to podcasts. So organizations that use podcasts as a way to reach their consumers or provide additional information, there's additional integration on the way, specifically to Google, not just about the, the hypertext associated with the, the, the podcast in and of itself, but also the content and the ability to listen to the, listen to the podcast, save the information all directly from within search. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. Search with AR plus computer vision. So augmented reality plus computer vision to deliver three-dimensional renderings and representation directly within search. But then that also applies to actual placement within your environment. So not only can you look up what muscle flexion is, you can see it in action. Again, here's an example of a great white shark. So you Google a great white shark. Now you have the opportunity to actually view the shark in three dimensions play with it in a specific location, and look at it even at scale. So as you can see the shark being placed here, we can then look, do close-ups, walk around, interact with the shark. It's just a really impressive way. But again, this isn't just coming from an application. This is coming directly out of a Google search result. So the combination of augmented reality plus computer vision to enhance search and the evolution of search beyond just answer and text to highly visual is something to really pay attention to. We think, let's pull that into a product example. Here's an example for New Balance. So New Balance has the ability now to deliver a three-dimensional shoe directly from the search result. You can view it now and even sit it next to your potential outfit. So if you want to coordinate and uh, basically <laughs> do that perfect color match there, now you can actually do that by placing it on the actual bed next to you. So, and visual search isn't just stopping within the, the Google proper search results. We're also seeing the evolution of Google Lenses. Google Lenses is Google's way of really taking and cataloging the physical world around us. Google Lens is tied to assistance, it's tied to photos, and it's a great way to basically use the camera as a lens to the world around us. So again, it's all about assistant, it's photos, it's camera. And here it is in action. So again, you can take Google Lenses and it's connected to Google Assistant. What it's doing here is it's actually enhancing a menu so you can see the most popular items on the menu based on external communication. That could be the comments, etc. Now it also pulls in specific images of what the food could look like, reviews of the restaurant, tying it directly into Assistant. And to add even more utility, there's a visual overlay component over the check to where you can figure out what it would be to split the check, what it would be to actually uh, drive a tip. All of this, again, aligning the camera plus Google Assistant.
So one of the other core elements that we we're seeing is that with Google Lenses, it's actually been activated over a billion times since last year, a billion. Google Lenses is actually right there within Google Search. It's the little camera icon that you can click to activate the experience. One of the other examples that was showcased today is the ability to take print media and actually convert it into an interactive experience directly from the camera. So the experience again is enhanced based on this, this recipe that actually shows the pork chop being cooked. So moving along from not only from search and from Google Lens and again, Google Lens is association with Assistant. Google Duplex was launched last year at Google I.O. And with Google Duplex, it's all about a voice-based assistant being able to take and schedule appointments on behalf of an individual. Again, the example last year was the voice assistant was able to call and speak with an individual at a hair salon to make an appointment without the individual knowing necessarily that they were talking to a proxy voice assistant. This year, Google's expanded upon Google Duplex, and Duplex is available in 44 states in the U.S. as it is. But now it's expanding beyond just voice-based calling, and Google's revealing Google Duplex for the web. So this, I talk a lot about the idea of the proxy web, the one way in which people are the most open to adopting intelligent systems is through ease and convenience. And there's a predictive element that has to kind of apply to drive that ease and convenience. With Google Duplex for the web, you're seeing it on the screen now. Google Assistant is basically going through the process of renting a car on my behalf. It knows my preference centers. It has most of the information that's required based on my driver information, etc. It knows the preferences on the vehicle, and it's able to now take and facilitate that and be, essentially be a proxy on my behalf. So it's an incredible, it's incredibly compelling to actually see it live on screen and seeing how the assistant and the vision of the assistant which essentially is to become this proxy of consumers is well underway for, from Google. One of the other things that we're seeing is previously I've talked a lot about how the assistant is moving to the center of the operating system. Well, Google's actually making that come to life with embedding the assistant directly on the device. And what you're seeing on the screen is the speed to which a, a Google Assistant query can drive multitasking and driving from application to application. It essentially becomes the way in which you navigate all of the various applications that you have on the device. And again, it's truly putting the assistant in the center of the experience. And this is really key because you have Apple that's wanting to continue to maintain the relevance of apps. Again, there have been 180 applications downloaded from the Apple App Store since its launch in 2008. Here, what you're seeing on the screen now, this is the new drive mode from Google Assistant. What it actually will do is once you, once you pop it in and you begin driving, it provides the most relevant information throughout your day right there on the screen. Whether that's you know, resuming a podcast that you were listening to earlier in the day, you needing to catch up with certain individuals, uh, listening to various types of media, all while putting the navigational experience there at the forefront while still keeping the other core utilities such as phone call, uh, the ability to make calls, receive messages, etc. So it's all voice based. But again, this is creating that that ease and convenience and that proxy experience to where the assistant really truly becomes your preference center. And it understands all of the key elements throughout your day and it begins stitching together various scenes by which you can then work and go throughout your day and just have that uh, just being enhanced. This is also coming to light too. We're seeing personalization and also, you know, we talk a lot about voice and about vision. We talk about computer vision and the role that it plays as well as voice here with Google Assistant. Now with the new uh, Nest Hub Max, what you're going to see is the ability to drive facial recognition to where you can basically sign up various members of your family to be recognized that then you can basically drive you know, your scheduling through the system. The other thing that's being introduced is also gesture-based interfaces now. Google's been working on this for a little while, but there it is. You saw her stop the timer so that she could pick up the phone. 
by just waving her hand. So again, that front-facing camera is incorporating computer vision and gesture-based interfaces in addition to just voice as a way to further extend multimodal experiences. Now, one of the questions I get asked a lot is, how do I actually connect my strategy from online, from a search perspective, to Google Assistant? This is how. It's through structured data. Structured data basically allows you to take and have your data assets being used in multiple ways across multiple device types within the Google ecosystem. Not only is it optimized for search, but then it can also be optimized for an interactive experience through structured data markup across Google devices. Now you can also use how-to templates. This is a way to extend YouTube video content into the Assistant ecosystem. What you can do is you can essentially mark out different elements or different steps uh, based on timestamps, based on bullet points, etc., and upload that into the Action Console. Then it will actually render across an, the Google hardware ecosystem that's tied to Google Assistant. So again, the structured data component of this can't be understated enough in terms of how you actually drive discovery across the Assistant ecosystem, especially as you move out towards multimodal interfaces. Google also unveiled new app actions for Google Assistant as well, to where you could essentially use the voice-based assistant to start a specific action. Here the example is the Nike Run Club. You're able to quickly get into the app and get your run started directly with a voice query. And here you can see the basic action and intent that's basically used. Now this is really interesting because again, Google is all about using Assistant almost as the concierge for applications to where you don't necessarily have to work with the individual native application yourself. The Assistant is taking all of the friction out of that interaction, such as the example that we saw earlier with the duplex example with their car rental to where it can essentially take in whether it's filling out different forms on your behalf, starting a specific application at a specific point via a deep link into the app to get, say, like the Nike Run Club up and running. It's all about moving the assistant to the center and becoming a proxy for it, the individual. So there was a lot, there was a lot more that was discussed during the course of 2019, everything from their new Stadia gaming streaming service as well as a lot around AR Core, which is their version of their augmented reality framework and with the way in which they're enhancing and enabling that for developers, uh, very similar to what Facebook is doing with Spark AR. Um, there was a lot of focus on the way in which artificial intelligence is being used across their product suite as well. But I really wanted this video to focus heavily on the specific changes to search which is the shift towards visual search, the role that Google Lenses now plays, as well as kind of the consolidation of computer vision and augmented reality to enhance those experiences directly from search results. That's a really key point to consider, uh, especially if you have content that lends itself to three-dimensional imagery. Uh, one of the other core things to really focus on is how Google Assistant is evolving to become a true proxy and it's moving beyond just the smart speaker and really looking to, to continue to deploy across not only the ecosystem that's developing but again really focusing on providing utility prediction becoming a preference center for individuals so it's re it'll be really key to watch Google's continued evolution over the next year or so as they continue to build on their heritage of search the incredibly strong knowledge graph that they have already, and how they can tie the various components together. All right, that's it. If you have any questions about Google I.O. 2019 in general, you can feel free to reach out to me at tom.edwards at epsilon.com, or of course you can follow me on Twitter at Blackfin360. Have a great day.